i encourage you to watch this video to the end at the end of it you will know why i ask you to watch it to the end let's get into this message to bless you powerfully let's go let's discuss the message that saves you can random pick believers across various congregations and have an honest interview ask them to defend their faith by helping you understand the life that they came into the life we call the faith life and you will be surprised and even get to the point of tears to know that many believers respectfully speaking including workers in church including ministers of the gospel cannot articulate the gospel in an intelligent sense that makes for understanding you would find people arbitrarily they call jesus they call salvation they will tell you i know i was saved from my sins several people would tell you jesus is the answer to what question are we together so it is important for us to understand what we have come into it was right in this very church that i was introduced to a small pamphlet called four spiritual laws and in it was a capture a very intelligent yet concise summary of the gospel it helped us understand the foundation of the christian faith and then also gave us the empowerment to witness effectively without being a disappointment to the kingdom I pray and hope that some of these things have not been lost today in the maze of westernization and over invention of strategies that may not seem to hold any kind of potency as far as soul winning is concerned hallelujah what then is the message the gospel of salvation you may want to write that the gospel of salvation is a revelation i'll take it slowly because i pray that we're able to write this the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the father's love a revelation of the father's love demonstrated or revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ a revelation of the father's love demonstrated and even revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus to the end that man and creation be reconciled back to God the gospel of salvation is a message that attempts to capture a revelation of the father's love demonstrated and revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus to the end that man and creation please take note you would you would observe immediately that the blessings of the gospel does not stop with man man was only the zenith of God's creation but not the only the gospel must be able to affect the entire creation hallelujah limiting the gospel to man as you will we, we'll be looking at it shortly from scripture limiting the blessings and the benefit of the gospel to man alone is inaccurate creation also were subject to the bondage of corruption by reason of the fall of man and so the Bible says creation is also waiting to step into the glorious liberty of the sons. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. This is very, very powerful. So the gospel, the message that saves is a revelation of the Father's love. That means the, the initiator, please listen carefully, the initiator of the entire plan of salvation was God the Father himself Jesus now came to the earth as a revelation 
and a demonstrator of that love are we together now there are many reasons why jesus came to the earth um taking us to heaven and giving us eternal life is only one but not the only reason we don't have all the time but it's important for us to understand that jesus came and walked the earth for many reasons i'll give you two for now number one being the ultimate reason was to be that bridge the the means for reconciliation back to the father through his substitutionary sacrifice but number two jesus christ came to the earth as a marking script to be able to re-edit our understanding about god because until jesus was revealed there were gaps in our knowledge about god we had to depend on prophets we had to depend on the law and most of them it was, their imperfections as to the picture they painted about god till today when you read the old testament very very intelligently if you are not careful at the end of your your research you will you would only arrive at a plethora of conflicting statements that seem to make god it gives god an expression that is not so jesus had to come as the revelation the bible calls him the express image of the invisible god you find that in hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 Verse 1 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us in time past through the prophets, he said, had in these last days spoken to us through his son, whom he had appointed to be heir of all things. Hallelujah. And then he calls him the image of the invisible God. This is very, very important. Are we still together? So the Bible starts by giving us a picture of God's mind and God's idea. Genesis chapter 1, when we read from verse 26, the Bible says, And God created man in his image. Genesis chapter 1, please. Media, are we working together? Genesis, okay. Let us make man in our own image, he says, and after our likeness. Hopefully, in, in the subsequent sessions, we'll, we'll be dealing with all of this. We have to understand the very creation of man because the Bible says man was created in the image of God and the likeness of God. The image of God is a spiritual quality. The likeness of God means his functionality, the way God functions. You have to understand how man was designed to be able to maximize your living as a Christian. But that's not where we're going to 26 god said let us make man in our image and our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so we see god's original idea and intention for man that he created man to legislate on this side of his kingdom it was god's idea that man would have the opportunity to dominate over creation and become an unveiling of the multifaceted dimension of his glory but then the bible tells us that something tragic happened hallelujah talks about the fact that adam and eve now walking in the garden he left them an instruction and he said of all the trees you may freely eat however of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou may not touch that in the day that you eat it you will surely die now this is very interesting because god said the day they eat of it they will die and yet we do not see them die on that day what then is death because we have to understand god's idea of death when he says you eat of this tree and you would die and yet we see adam living hundreds of years after in fact paul was explaining the concept of death and he said death was a natural consequence of the the power of sin over the mortal body of man so god's idea of death is not cessation from living in fact I hope I do not trouble your theology, but I hope you know that the word translated eternal life is not very accurate. 
um, this is not to create any theological debate but the word eternal life there um, is supposed to be the life of God because from a theological standpoint everybody lives forever I hope you know that when you preach to sinners you don't ask them will you spend eternity the question is location not possibility everyone will live forever read your bible and you read the story of lazarus and the rich man sin one they are both on earth sin two outside the earth you see that they were both alive are we together i'm saying this because hopefully in this journey we will define what god calls life and define what god calls death that a man can still be alive and yet god says that man is dead adam was still living and yet an instruction was given that the day you violate this you will die and we do not see cessation from breathing it means therefore there are many many people who are dead even though they are breathing and there are many people who are not breathing and are still alive this will give you what we call the hope of glory that even though you have lost a loved one it is only the body that has been disconnected to the spirit they are as alive they are more alive and active as you will ever know this will now give you hope you see the, the believers confidence was not supposed to be derived from physical maturity or just intellect it's supposed to be derived from truths that were put in scripture there is something about scripture the character of scripture that when you find it can give you the strength to look at a dead body and still find hope there is no amount of growth and maturity that can immune you from the impact of losing a loved one you have to outsource your strength from the knowledge of scripture that means if i see a dead body for instance it is only the body that has been separated paul says to be absent in the body is to be present with the lord not to be on a journey you are present that instant is god equipping us so that when we stand to preach to sinners we are not just satisfying the guilt of not of um of not being lazy spiritually for many people evangelism is a burdensome ritual that they have to do because they are in a position where they cannot explain otherwise it is this revelation that will plant in our hearts a genuine desire to see sinners saved only if we understand the gospel if you like the kind of content we share on this page i encourage you to follow this page and share this message with your friends. I know you have been blessed. See you in our next video.